Hello again, Year 10. Hopefully you have spent some time practicing expanding and the different techniques to use there. Because today we're going to reverse that and now we want to factorize expressions. So factorizing is where you take out a common factor to put something back into brackets. And the first type of question that you learned was like this one here. If you have 2a plus 6, you can see that there's a common factor of 2 in both of those terms that comes out the front. And you divide each term to put the remaining things inside the brackets. However, that is not the only type of factorizing that you have seen before. There are several techniques that you have covered in Year 9, and they include taking out a common factor, that's the one we just did, difference of two squares, grouping in pairs, which is when you have four terms, monic quadratic trinomials, and non-monic quadratic trinomials. Okay, so there is five different factorizing techniques. Now we're not going to do all of those techniques today, but we are going to do three of them. We are going to do taking out a common factor, we're going to do the difference of two squares, and we're going to be doing the grouping in pairs. We're just not going to be doing any trinomials today. We'll save that for later or next lesson. So question one in the examples is factorizing by taking out a common factor. Okay, so you've done lots of these in the past. So what you want to do is you want to look at the terms that you have in your expression. So I have five and, and 20, and I want to work out the highest number or factor that I can take out of those two terms. So five and 20 both divide by five. So that is the common factor that I bring out the front. Five, then I open a bracket. Then you divide each term to find what is left to put in the brackets. So for example, 5m divided by 5 is simply m. And 20 divided by 5 is 4. So we have m plus 4 inside the brackets. For part b, very similar question. We have minus 4d take away 10. Now negative signs can also be factors. If both of your terms are negative, then you must take out the negative as a common factor. So both of these do have negative signs. So we want minus at the front. 4 and 10 can both be divided by 2. There are no letter factors there. So negative 2 is my highest common factor at the front. Now I need to divide each of my terms. Minus 4 divided by minus 2 would make a positive 2, and I also have a D. Negative 10 divided by negative 2 makes a positive 10 divided by 2 is 5. In part C, we want to take out a common factor. This time, though, we do actually have a common letter as well. But do one thing at a time. So start with the numbers. 30 and 20 can both be divided by 10. And both of those terms have an M in them. So M is a common factor. Open the bracket and divide each term. 30 divided by 10 is 3. M squared to take one of those M or divide one of those M's away, I would still have another M inside the bracket. The second term, 20 divided by 10 is 2. I have divided the M out the front, so that is it. Close the bracket. Part D is actually taking out a common factor. It's just that my common factor is a whole bracket. This X plus 2 is a common factor that I can take out the front. So x plus 2 out the front, open my bracket to put the remaining things inside the bracket. So from the first term, if I've divided the x plus 2 out the front, I would have a 2, this 2, inside the bracket. For the second term, I've divided the x plus 2 out the front, so I would have the plus 3x in there to finish that second bracket. 
Okay, so question one, that was all taking out a common factor. Question two is factorizing using the difference of two squares. Okay, now we're not always going to tell you which type of factorizing to do. You need to be able to look at the questions and know which technique you need to apply. So to recognize these questions, you will see that e, there is two terms. There is two terms in the expression. So a squared and minus 16, for example. And usually those two terms are both perfect squares, meaning that I can square root them to put them into the brackets. Okay, so to do that in 2a, these questions always factorize into two brackets. What I do is I take the first term, a squared, and I square root that. The square root of a squared is a, and that goes at the front of both brackets. Then I square root the 16, which is 4, and that goes at the end of each bracket. And I will need a plus sign in one of the brackets and a minus sign in the other one. It doesn't matter which one you put first. Okay, so that's difference of two squares. Let's do it again. So for B, we're going to have our two sets of brackets. We're going to square root 9m squared. Well, the square root of 9 is 3 and m at the start of each bracket. The square root of 4n squared will be 2 n. Then I need one bracket to be a plus and one to be a minus. Part C, we're still using difference of two squares, so we need our double bracket. We square root x squared, which is x, and we want to square root the 8. Now 8 doesn't square root nicely. We definitely don't want to go to a decimal, which means we will need to go to third form square root of 8 and square root of 8. One would be a plus and one would be a minus. Now that is an answer, but remember if we have thirds, we always need to be checking to see if we can simplify them. Now the square root of 8 is the same as having square root of 4 times square root of 2. The square root of 4 is 2, so it would become 2 root 2. So a more simplified way to write that answer would be x plus 2 root 2 and x minus 2 root 2. Just simplifying the third. Part D, we want to do difference of two squares, so we have two sets of brackets. The first term is x minus 3 squared. So when I square root that, I will have x minus 3 at the beginning of both brackets. Then I want to <coughs> square root the second term, which is 7. Again, that doesn't square root nicely, so I'll have to leave it in the third form. Square root of 7 and square root of 7. One will have a plus sign and one will have a minus sign. And I can't actually make that any tidier, so that's the answer. Okay, question three. We want to factorize by grouping in pairs. Now you will know that you need to use this technique when you have four terms in your expression. What you want to do is take two terms together at a time and find the highest common factor. Now often you can just do the first two terms together and the second two terms together. So it's always a good place to start. So let's try that. The first two terms, I can see that there is a common factor of m. If I bring the m out the front, that would leave n from the first term, and from the second term, dividing the m away, I would get a three, close the bracket. Then looking at this, the third and the fourth term, there is a common factor of a positive three. Dividing each term by 3 would give me n, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now, if I've done this correctly, then these brackets should be the same, okay? Meaning that I can factorize again 
by using that n plus 3 to be a common factor. So the n plus 3 will come out the front. I will open up a second set of brackets. From the first term, the m will come inside the brackets. And from the second term, this 3, this positive 3, will come in here. Okay, so it will still factorise to be a double set of brackets. Let's do part B, practice this again. So let's take the first and the second term together and the third and the fourth together again. So the first two terms, the only factor that is in those terms is the Q. So the Q will come out the front. From the first term, I have a 10 and a P that would be left over. Q divided by Q would be a 1, but I have a negative sign as well, so negative 1. From the third and the fourth term, there is a factor of 2 in there. However, because I know I need my first term to be positive, I'm going to have to take that negative sign out as a factor. So I'm going to bring out negative 2. Negative 20 divided by negative 2 makes a positive 10p. Then 2 divided by negative 2 makes a negative 1. And again, with a little bit of manipulation, I have managed to make these brackets the same. So I can factorize further by using the 10p take away 1 as a common factor. And the q take away 2 goes into the second bracket. Okay, we have one more question here to do. In part C, if we were trying to take the first and the second term together, there would be no common factor. There's no common factor between 2xA and 9. Okay, so in this case, we may have to pair our terms differently. So what I will do, I might pair the first term with the last term because they both have an x in them. So if I factorize that x out, I would get x bracket. From the first term, I would get 2a. And from the x, x divided by x is 1. Then I will need to take the, third, the second and the third term together. Both of those terms are negative, so I'm going to bring a minus sign out. And both of those terms can be divided by 9. Now, nine, negative 9 divided by negative 9 is a positive 1. Negative 18 divided by negative 9 is a positive 2 and the a. Now, even though it's in a different order, 2a two plus, two plus 1 is the same as 1 plus 2a. Those brackets are the same. So I can factorize further, bring the 2a plus 1 at the front. In front of that first bracket, I have an x. And in front of the second bracket, I have the negative 9. And that's complete. Time for you to practice.